The football field house at Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School is named after Nicholas Xaros, a 2006 DUI graduate and U.S. Marine who was killed in action in Afghanistan on July 23, 2009. Nick was well liked among students and staff, but many of those who knew him have graduated, retired, or moved on. Over time, Nicholas Xaros may become just another name memorialized on a building or bridge, but those of us who knew him would like to keep his spirit alive at DUI. We present a video portrait of Nick so that future generations will understand the student behind the memorial. Nick Xaros, uh, we were, you know, of course I was his assistant principal, but he was a nice guy. Um, I knew his uh, dad, uh, and of course his brothers, his sister, so they were a real DY family. When they heard that I was getting um, deployed to Iraq, he said, hey, Mr. Morrison, could we maybe do a Skype thing while you're away? So before I left, we had talked about it, and then uh, I went to Iraq, and Nick pulled it together. The time difference was so great, they wanted to make sure I was able to do it, you know, and have everybody in school. So I think it was pretty late at night for me, but it was daytime for you guys here at school, so uh, we did a phone call and set it up and pretty much that, that's, how it, that's how it worked. Being able to Skype with all the people here at DY really meant a lot to me because at the time, being so far away and being in a pretty rough situation, at least for me, I thought it was rough. Others, of course, have had it rougher. Um, but it was kind of a low time for me and um, that Skype really helped me out connecting back here with the people at DY. So I've always been extremely grateful. I had Nick in my class twice. I had him for basic media production and I had him for advanced media production. And one of the things that impressed me most about him, um, we had, we used to, in advanced media, we used to hold uh, debates every other week. This, one of the students would pick a topic that was media related and they would have to research both sides of the topic and then the class would debate it. And Nick, loved participating in the in the debates. I remember this one day where people were really into the discussion and Nick w was was talking and I get he he really started frustrating somebody else in the classroom. And that person finally turned to him and said said I know what your politics are. And I know that you don't you don't the things that you're saying are not things that you believe. And Nick laughed and he said he said I know but it seemed like the whole class was going in this direction. So somebody had to take the voice of the other side. And that particularly impressed me because he, he was able to see both sides of the argument and to, to, to watch the, the, the discussion and to try to steer the discussion to keep the discussion alive. And he said it was because that's, that's why he loves this country, because, because we can have different ideas and, 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 and express those ideas and disagree and exchange, ex exchange thoughts with each other. Well, psychology class was great because the teacher was very, very anti-war and Nick was very pro-war. So Nick could say a few remarks and get the teacher's goat, but the teacher would try really hard to keep the lesson going, but Nick would get her goat so well that they would just get into an argument, and that argument would last a half an hour, and the whole class could just sit back and watch this like mess unravel. It was great. <laughs> it was great to see, because Nick was very passionate about what he believed in, and you, you couldn't really argue against him on that. You know, it's his beliefs. It's what he believes in. When he was a student, uh, you know, there was uh, he, he he wanted to be a Marine in the worst way. And uh, back in the day, we used to let the Marine Corps recruiter used to come in, and we would let the recruiter set up in the cafeteria, so anyone who was interested um, could, could walk over and get the literature or get the information. The Marine Corps was a little more dynamic than the other recruiters because if you did so many push-ups, they they give you some sort of trinket. Um, Nick was always over there doing push-ups, and when he wasn't doing push-ups, I remember looking over, and he'd be standing at attention next to the recruiter, you know, in his school clothes. 
uh, be, because he was uh, either very close to starting the enlistment process or strongly considering it or he had completed it. You know, it, it was always somewhere in that process because it was he, he had a laser-like focus about becoming a United States Marine. So anytime the Marine Corps, Marine Corps recruiter showed up, Nick would be standing next to him and he'd either be doing, pumping out push-ups like crazy um, or standing or standing like ramrod straight at attention next to him for one reason or another. It's kind of funny, but you're like, that kid means it. He is not fooling around. And he wasn't fooling around. And he, I met a number of Marines that served with Nick who say he was an excellent Marine. And I, you know, the, there's a contrast. He had come home on leave at one point and visited DY. And uh, he left here, skinny guy, he came back a monster. He was huge. So all those push-ups paid off. Uh, we played sports together, football. You know, went to all the same high school parties and stuff like that. We both decided we were going to join the Marines when we were probably 16. So both our parents had to have waivers for us to sign to go in. And um, you know, since then we did all the the uh, pre-enlistment programs together, the recruiting office in Hyannis and stuff like that, and kind of just hung out all the way up until June when we left. Um, towards the end of his senior year, uh, he and I were talking one-on-one -on -one at one point, and, and I told him, I said, you know, why don't you consider uh, doing some kind of ROTC? Why don't you go to college? Because, you know, the Marines, um, I said, you're, you're a thinking man, and um, the Marines will need, uh, they need leaders. They need organizers. They need people that, uh, that that other soldiers will look up to, and you are you are that guy. You're you're tailor made for it. And uh, he said no uh, because he he said he wanted to uh, he wanted to get his boots on as soon as possible. Uh, for so running for your life was a chase sequence that we were uh, writing. I picked Nick because I knew he was very uh, fast and he wouldn't complain about having to run so much. But I was very surprised that when we had a tree, uh, tree climbing scene, that was when Nick was most afraid. He did not like having to climb heights. That was something about Nick I was very surprised to see, that he was human like the rest of us and had some, uh, some fears, you know, normal ones. But other than that, yeah, very brave kid. and. Um, great actor to work with, didn't complain, was willing to do it, uh, run as fast as he could, go over and over, you know, we could push him. And then, uh, Who Wears White to a Funeral, I wrote specifically for him because I wanted him to play a military person, someone in the military. And he, it came out, I think, funnier than I expected. One of my favorite memories of Nick, there were a, a group of students, senior students, that wanted to, to do a comedic film about a drug-sniffing dog that had retired. It was a, it worked for the military and had retired, and it was a memorial service for the dog. And uh, Nick played the drill sergeant that had trained the dog. And on the day of the set, we're shooting in the woods behind the student's house, and we had, we had students there from, we had band kids, and we had academic track students, and we had non-academic track students. We had this eclectic mix, and then into the mix walks this um, macho military football kid, um, and, and, and he, was in, in, uh, he, was, he was dressed up in uniform, and it just seemed like such a strange mix of students and that, that, that these young men would not get along, we had the best time that day. We had the best time that day because, um, because you know, Nick was one of those guys that just, you know, he, 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 whether he was on the football field or in an academic classroom or an arts classroom, um, he just got along with people. I remember one of my favorite moments from that shooting was um, he was in character trying to play the drough, tough drill sergeant and he accidentally broke character and smiled and it, it ended up working. We ended up using it in the film. Uh, he was very popular and he really brought people to him, like with his positive energy, I would say. A little intimidating at first, but overall a very warm and accepting guy, very friendly and fun. Yeah, enjoyed playing airsoft and other sports and uh, get into a little trouble, but you know, being a little outrageous, like uh, shouting as loud as he could in the parking lot, screaming, uh, hey oh, or hoorah! <laughs> yeah, just very energetic guy and just, ah, uh, very
Very friendly. Nick was a very, had a very unique way of reaching everyone. It's the kind of quality you always want to see in like a senior class president or a student body president, where they have the ability to make connections with the whole class. And that's a very, very rare thing. We've had probably two senior class presidents in 21 years who've been able to achieve something like that, where everybody felt like they were included and connected to the class and were a participant. Um, Nick did not hold an office, but he was that guy. Uh, and anybody who was connected to him or ran into him uh, felt like they were engaged. It felt like they were you know, a valued person and he treated them that way. Uh, and uh, it might have been me that called him the mayor of DY. You know, he just, he, he made those connections, you know. It was um, a really, really terrific quality. Probably the most well-liked person in DY. Uh, you know, people called him the mayor of DY. He was just involved in every social club you could be in. He was a you know, star athlete. Um, just carried himself well, friends with everybody. I don't think anybody would ever have something bad to say about him. Without me tearing up, probably one of the greatest young men I've ever had the pleasure and the pl privilege to know. He was that kind of guy. He was like, uh, I don't know, he's the type of guy that he would do anything for anybody. He was, he was one of those guys that really believed in service to others. So that's the kind of guy he was. And in my heart, that's the kind of guy he always be. He stays with me every day. The one thing about his death was it really did bring the town together in a way I'd never seen it really come together to support uh, their own. It was just a really great showing from the town of Yarmouth, uh, its people coming together to support the Exaros family and I, I thought that was incredible. That, that was really something to see just everyone coming together to try and help out and do what they could and just uh, carry on and remember him. When, when someone dies, especially when someone dies young, um, when someone dies in service to their country, it's, it's customary, number one, to not say, uh, to not speak ill of the dead um, and to, to, to lionize that person, to, to describe their, you know, how great and wonderful they were. Um, and um, the, the trick here with Nick is that he really was that guy. He really was a, a, an exceptional, intelligent, caring, friendly young man. And when I say it, I don't say it simply because he's a fallen soldier. I say it because I knew him and I worked with him. Um, and he, he, he was one of the most uh, remarkable students that I ever had. as he watches down at us from heaven, he's without a doubt having a good laugh. <laughs>